Hello and welcome to the Knitting Tradition Podcast. My name is Inga and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. I am coming to you from a October day, rainy and gloomy as per usual, from the west coast of Norway where I live with Matthias and spend my free time knitting. I have some whips. I have two and a half, three finished objects. Um, I got some ends to weave in. <laughs> and um, I also have some swatches. I am dream knitting a little bit. There's things that I want to cast on. I just need to find the right um, or the perfect project for the yarn before I want to uh, invest my time in it because the the things that I want to make are cardigans, cables, things that take a little bit more time. So I want to make sure that I'm making the right things. So you're well, very welcome to snuggle up and enjoy this episode. I hope you have something to enjoy, whether it be your knitting, your tea, coffee, beverage, if there's something that you're doing, just find the cozy feeling. I have made myself some uh, loose tea with honey and I am wearing my Billy Pullover. This one I made last year. It's a design by I know this. Why is it not coming to the top of my head? Oh wow, I know her really well. She has so many beautiful designs and she has a podcast. Sorry, sorry Nordland, um, one of her beautiful designs. And the yarn that I made this in, I had to have a think about it. This was a yarn swap that I did with a, a yarny friend of mine from Canada. And I think this is yarn from the Macausland mill. I think she sent six hundred grams of this yarn. It came came in hanks. And it is a really beautiful tweedy, not tweedy, but heathered looking uh, yarn. And it's quite rustic uh, in a wholesome way. I find that this yarn feels like it would be the perfect yarn for cardigans. I really enjoy how the cables and everything pop. On this design even if it's a dark color they really do stand out it's quite dense like this sweater could stand up on its own but i like that um i feel like it's more of a workhouse sweater i'm not afraid to use it if it was more floppy and drapey i probably wouldn't wear it as much as i do wear this because i feel like this is sturdy and i i i love to wear it uh it doesn't scratch me when you touch it, you would not say that this is soft, but it doesn't have like stiff guard hair sticking out either, like Icelandic wool um, kind of rustic yarn does. So I don't find it scratchy. I find next to skin soft, even against my neck. So yeah, I hope to get my hands on more of this yarn in the future, because this would be an ideal cardigan yarn for me, for like a cabled cardigan, like a steaked version of this even. Sorry. Cardigan version of the Billy Pullover would be great. So yeah, that is what I am wearing. And I'm going to see if this is drinkable or if it's way too warm. There's steam coming off of it, so maybe it's too warm. Yeah, almost there. Then, I uh, had a road trip with Matthias. We went to a wedding, my cousin's wedding, and there was a lot of hours in the car. So I got some knitting done. I think I had cast this on last time. I, I forget myself, I don't know, but I finished a hat. This is the um, watch cap hat. 
by Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern. It's a two by two rib. I just really enjoy the, the crown decreases. That's like a five point decrease that you just knit two together. And I think it looks really neat. Sometimes like with this one, I find it a little bit pointy at the top. So maybe I should have decreased even more rapidly at the end. Um, but I don't mind. I think it looks really cute. I usually, <laughs> I'm always using a new kind of yarn for this pattern. It's a very simple pattern. So I will take what yarn I have and a needle size that I think will be good for that yarn. And then um, <laughs> I will cast on. So the, the pattern I think goes from 120 stitches. That's the, the like baby toddler. The child is 140 stitches, adult 160, and then maybe 180 for large adult. I think I cast on initially 140, so the kid size, and it was huge. Um, <laughs> so I went down to 120 stitches, so the baby toddler, and I also went down to, um, I think I used a three millimeter needle for this. And that turned out perfect for my head. I don't have a big head. Uh, I don't swatch because, honestly, it doesn't take a long time to just knit a bit of ribbing and see how big it's look, if it's looking humongous or not. And it doesn't need to be, like, perfect because it is, it's a ribbed hat, so it's very stretchy, so it's going to stretch out. So I'd rather have it too small than too big because I don't want it to be floppy on the head. And I knitted until the recommended length for the small adult. Uh, and then I started the decreases. But because I was using a, a smaller needle and smaller, I had fewer stitches, I found that the, the crown decreases would have maybe have made the hat a little bit too short. So every like fourth row, I just knit a row without doing any decreases. So that elongated it a little bit. I didn't do it for the, the top part, just like this section. So that helped and I find that it fits really well. Um, and should I destroy my sleep curls to show you? Yeah. I really like it. I love the color. I love the feel. This is the softest feeling merino. There's no itch factor at all. And I didn't show you, I'm sorry. I. I I did my hair for you guys. I don't want to ruin it. Um, I use the hand dyed hanks by Drover and Classer from Bellevue Park, which was sent to me. I showed it a few few episodes ago, and I got two hanks in this color, which is the vine vine, as in the plant vine. That's the name of the colorway, and. It's 100 grams of super fine merino wool and 238 meters. So, DK, I think. I think DK. Um, yeah, and I really like how it's looking. I'm, I'm curious to see how it holds up. I'm expecting it to pill a little bit. Just because it is such a soft fiber um, but that's fine I do have the possibility to depill it or I don't really mind pilling that much I often just wear stuff even though it's getting a little bit pilled like this one could probably use with a little bit of depilling but um, I wear my knits for what they are but yes, very happy with this one. And as soon as I finished it on the ferry, <laughs> going back yesterday, uh, Matthias tried it on and um, he wore it until he went to sleep. So we'll see who gets to wear this the most. <laughs> but I do have two, so I could potentially make another one. Uh, he likes to wear it above his ears, like a non-functional hat. <laughs> But I do have a little bit left from from the first hank. So if I make it again, I could make it slightly longer. And um, that would be good too. Yes. 
so that is my first finished object the watch cap hat by pearl soho they also have uh, the other free pattern which is very popular which is a one by one ribbed hat but i really like the look of the of the two by two rib i think I don't know, the, the knit stitches look more neat in a 2x2 two two rib when I knit than a 1x1 one one rib. So I really like it and uh, also I can wear this hat both ways, inside and out. Like the decreases still look decent on this in this pattern even though it's inside out. So that is a bonus. Just try to remember what is the right side. I guess it doesn't matter, you just wear whatever you think looks nice. So first finished object. Now, my second finished object is a gift for a friend, aka Trader, who is moving away from here. But uh, she's holding my hat hostage. She borrowed one of my watch cap hats for a festival this summer, an, in orange, orange color. And I haven't gotten it back. And um, she has expressed that she wants a hat uh, and she wants it in blue because she's blonde, blue eyes. Blue is very suitable color for her, like a light blue. So I looked at my stash and I had some blue yarns, uh, both uh, this one. So I'm, I'm gonna wait to post this video until I've given her the gift, though I don't think she watches it. But I want to make sure, because she doesn't know I've already made her the hat that she's been hinting at. This is Lore yarn. It's 100% wool. And I think I have the tag. Yeah, it's the Lore Wool as Story by The Fiber Co. It's 100% Kent Lamb's wool. Sourced and produced in England. And 100 grams is 250 meters. So I had one of these that I bought when I was in Paris. Now I have a very sensitive forehead, so I'm unsure if this would be a good fit for my forehead. If, if going out into the cold and to stay warm, definitely a good fit, but to wear all day also inside the house, which I tend to do, then it may become prickly as I get warm. So. I think she's not as sensitive as me, and I paired it with the silk mohair that I also had in my stash. Uh, I had a single skein of this. This is silk mohair from Vikingarn, which is the Norwegian producer. And together they made really nice fabric. And this is the one that I need to still weave the ends in. Now I know that uh, she fits the same kind of hat size that I do because she has used my orange hat that I made for me. So I did the same. I made the, um, the watch cap hat by Pearl Soho, two by two rib. And uh, for this, I since this was a thicker yarn combination and I knew that 120 stitches on this thinner yarn combination, got me the right size. I actually went for a hundred stitches only on this, so a hundred stitches is smaller than the smallest size in the pattern. Uh, and I used a four millimeter needle instead. So it's quite nice and flexible with a two by two rib. And I think the color is gonna look amazing on her, so I do hope she likes it. I need to weave in <laughs> the ends, but I'll do that after after recording this. I usually weave it into like one leg going back and forth here, and then every second bump on the purl row back. That way it's quite invisible and it can be worn both ways because I don't think she'll know which is the inside and outside. Uh, and this one, I'll do the same, put it through and then fasten it on the inside and I actually have not tried this on but yeah it's a good hat size I think she's going to like it and the good thing about like a ribbed hat with a brim is that if someone has a bigger head 
they can just um, make the, the rib shorter. If they have a really tiny head, they can double fold it if they want that hipster look. <laughs> I personally enjoy a thicker brim like this, so that is what I like to do. Uh, but they are quite good gift knits because of how stretchy they are and how you can change the length to fit several head sizes. It all depends on preference. And it's not really that itchy when I wear it now, but I do think with my forehead history of wearing hats, that if I were to get really warm, my forehead would start scratching. But it is really nice and soft feeling and I haven't even blocked it yet. So I think it's going to be really good. So that is two watch cap hat beanies and this one i knit the day going down i had in the morning a glucose tolerance test in norway everyone older than 25 needs to do that when they're pregnant to see if they have um, gestational diabetes i didn't so now i had i celebrated with cake and <laughs> i was knitting on this while waiting for the results and uh, while driving down to the wedding, I wasn't feeling too good, so knitting was keeping me busy, and that was fun, and I finished it on the way. So one day worth of knitting, a lot of knitting, but one day, got me this gift. And I was keeping it in, in my blue rabbit house bag. I just love this. It's very autumnal, and I like to have my little smaller whips in this. I think this is probably the medium size. She has many beautiful designs, but I'm pretty sure this, this is the medium size bag. Good for most of my projects, except for like sweaters and blankets. So yes, need to fasten in those ends. I can put this into my scrappy stash. And this is my proper stash. All right. Yeah. I finished another item. Should be in my basket of mess. I finished a hot water bottle cover. That I was, um, I think I had started this the last time that I recorded for you guys. This is a autumnal 100 gram skein from Fjord Fibers, Gilly. She is an indie dyer in Bergen, Norway. That's the city on the west coast of Norway. It's where my parents live and it's where I've lived many years of my life. And this color really speaks fall to me. It reminds me of those crisp fallen leaves that we seldom get here on the west coast because it's always wet but it's giving me the mood and i use quite a bit of this for a hot water bottle cover that i showed in the previous episode and i was intending to just knit until i ran out and then do a contrast color for the top but i managed to finish the whole water bottle with that skein and i have like a tiny little nugget left but that's not enough to do much of anything with really and for this hot water bottle <laughs> say that five times fast hot water bottle cover um i had this water bottle from before that is slightly smaller than the cream ones that i usually get from a store here so i i don't use a pattern for for this uh i cast on with is it Judy's magic cast on? Until I feel like when I stretch it on the needles, it fits about this much of the bottom. And then I will do increases like you would do raglan increases. So um, I'll have two stitches on each side and then do increases on each side of those two stitches on each end, every row until when I stretch it out, it fits the whole, whole width. Of the bottle and then I'll just knit in the round until I get to the point where the bottle starts sloping again 
And then I'll do, instead of increases at those four points, I'll do um, slip, slip, knit, and knit two together, like you would do with uh, a toe on a sock, for example. And I do that until it fits the bottle neck, and then I do a two by two rib, and I just knit straight until it's either long enough to fold it double, like I have done here. If I run out of yarn, I will knit it to just the length or slightly longer and shove it into the top. This water bottle have a little plastic flippy thing on the top. So you can see here. So it was a little bit difficult to, to knit it to fold in. So I decided to just do this and I'm really happy with it. So I've knit two covers so far this fall and my intention is to maybe keep one of them and then the other one will be a gift and maybe if I make some more I'll have more gifts. Um, I personally love using hot water bottle covers. I put in the warmest water from tap that I have and put it in bed and the next morning it's still warm, maybe closer to body temp temperature but still warm. If it goes outside of the duvet, it'll probably cool down faster, but as long as it's next to body, it's really nice all night long. So that, sorry, I think I hit the setup. So that is all of my finished objects, but I do have a lot of progress on a new whip that I got a bit addicted to. I just, this is so good. I need to have some before it gets cold. Okay, so I'm going to look into my cheat sheet. Sorry if I'm moving the setup again. So I cast on a pattern, which is called the Camellia Sweater Little by Sumin, S-O-U-M-I-N-E. She is a, I think, Korean designer. And she has this beautiful pattern that was suggested to me by a fellow podcaster. And it's an all-over color work sweater. And the pattern goes from two years to adults. And... This is the two years, because I am pregnant, but it's also going to work as a swatch for the adult size, which I'm considering, considering making either one that is big enough to fit both Matthias and me, so it can be matchy, or if I have the stamina, I will make two, one for me and one for him. However, I am really glad <laughs> that I decided to swatch with the child size first because I realized some things as I was knitting on this. Now I'm not using the recommended yarn because I usually am not. I'm using Rauma Finel because I love Rauma Finel it's got some great properties, it's really warm, and it softens a lot with washing. It's still a rustic yarn though, um, but the child can wear something underneath if they're more sensitive. This is going to be the two-year size. And if I didn't do modifications, technically, with the ribbing, it would be done on the body now. But I found the arms to be quite short, so I did another repetition of this color work right here and then I'm going to do a ribbing like I did here. So for the sleeve I decided to do more color work and do a really long rib that will then, if I have a slim tall child, which family history says I probably will, then this is good and hopefully it can be worn for two seasons by first wearing it with the sleeves rolled up and just a longer body. And then as the child grows, um, just unfold the sleeves and 
have more of the shorter body which is intended in the pattern. I don't know if there's a huge discrepancy about children's height in Korea and Norway. Generally, we are very tall people, but when I try to look at pediatric graphs, like nerdy of me, <laughs> they do have like the same percentile growth chart um, references, so they should be the same, but yeah, I found it to be a lot shorter, both in sleeves and body, than Norwegian patterns for two years, two year olds would be. And I found that it was quite wide, like width-wise, in the raglan and the body. So I thought it would be a shame if it was like a oversized cropped sweater that couldn't be worn that long. So I did those modifications. I made the sleeves longer, long cuff, and I'm going to add more to the body as well. I'm going to do another repetition of the yellow and then do a rib and see how it's looking and compare it to um, a lot of free patterns from Sana's Garn that I have that come in two-year-old sizes. It's just an easy way to, to check how far off or if it's, if it's a good fit. Uh, and I can just add to the ribbing as well if if it's still short or i could do another repetition of the red but i don't think i think that would be too long so i think a yellow repetition and a rib and it's going to be finished now another thing that i noticed about this pattern <laughs> is first there's a lot of ends to weave in because <laughs> You're only knitting with two colors at a time. So you're knitting with a yellow and green, and then you're knitting with a red and green. And then there's a slight little row with little black fleets, if you can see it. It's not super visible, but it's there. This is very similar to the coloring in the original. I loved the autumnal feel of it, so I copied it with Finul. Though the phenol is a little bit maybe darker and more heathered, especially in the yellow. So it's not popping as much in the original, but I don't mind that at all. I like it and I think I want the same colors for me if, if I get around to it. But yeah, so I could have carried the color all the way down, but I find that to be... Well, it's almost as much of a hassle as just weaving in the ends, and it also might be visible. So I decided to just cut the yarn after every, like, color use um, and wove them in. But I did it as I went. So right now, all the ends are woven in, except for this sleeve here and the cuff here. So that helps. And I will make myself... Do that for the adult version too so I don't have a million ends to weave in when I finish and I think that helps. I also decided to do the neckline as soon as I finished my first ball of yarn just because I think when you have the neckline in it looks more put together and I enjoy looking at my work in progress a lot more. Now the biggest thing about this pattern that I have not modified for the small version, but I'm seriously considering doing it for the adult, is if you look at this sweater from afar, I don't think you realize that all the red flowers are different. They are not the same, which means the chart is impossible to memorize and also the placement of the different flowers shifts from every time you do them again so you can't really read the color work from before because they have changed position so this sweater the entire sweater is a color work chart and i don't mind a color work chart i love color work charts but usually after doing like one repetition of the pattern I can memorize it and just go without looking at the chart but because every red flower 
is a different red flower and they change position as you go down the body and sleeves like you see here's one flower this is a different flower <sighs> yeah so i am very much considering picking out one flower that i like the most maybe two flowers and do like every second alternating them i think i would still be able to memorize it after a while if i did that so and that would make it more interesting but with with this contrast that's not very visible i don't think i would look at an adult sweater of this with the same red flower like maybe maybe this one and think oh that's boring but I would, when knitting on it, be going crazy after a while because I would have to look at the chart all the time. So, yeah. Seriously, having a think about that, um, as this is my swatch, that the adult version, I might change it up. Now, that would mean I would have to like redo the chart for myself especially for the raglan because for the raglan you know you're <laughs> you're not starting at the same point in like a square chart it's growing in both directions so it will require a bit of mental capacity on my behalf but how cute wouldn't it be to have like adult and child-sized matchy sweaters so even if you're not into knitting children's patterns you could knit this for an adult just imagining just imagine this supersized and take into consideration the things that i just said but yeah i am loving how it's looking and it was quite addicting to get done because i really wanted to see how it looks i but the the color work was annoying me a bit that I had to look at the chart at all times uh, so it's definitely a knit that you have to pay attention to but it's looking so cute it's matching my couch and pillows very autumnal very my colors and Matthias likes it too so we'll see if I make two adults or just make one for him that I also will wear We'll see. I don't have the adult pattern. I have the, the little pattern. So that's two to ten years. And then the original adult pattern probably is above that, I'm assuming. Um, there's a lot of patterns, no, not patterns, pictures on Instagram and Ravelry of the adult version. Um, when it comes to the little, I only found one project when I looked on Ravelry because I wanted to see how how it fit on children um, if it looked short or not when I was worrying about the length and stuff but there wasn't many people who had made it but here's another one and it's very cute so that is one and if you want to copy these colors I have written down the ball bands like a good podcaster this time. So the green color is the Rauma Finul in 0486. The yellow is 4125. The red is 4132. And the black is 0410. But honestly, for the black, you just need a nugget of yarn, so you can just use whatever black yarn you have in a, like a similar thickness of yarn. It's not very visible at all. And whatever leftovers I have of this yarn, I can put it into my square blanket, which is also in Ramofino. And I think I'm going to have plenty. This is my second ball of the green. And I think it should be enough to finish the sweater. The pattern says that I needed three. But I don't. I don't think I do. So it uses not that much yarn. Which is, which is nice. 
And then I have two bigger um, projects to show you. I'll show you the newest cast on first because it's on top of this mess of a basket. And then I have the biggest whip in the bottom, as per usual. Now, Rauma Fin, Rauma Fin, that's the yarn, Rauma, the yarn company, which is a Norwegian yarn company, they make similar booklets um, to what Sanesgarn makes, which Sanesgarn is very famous internationally now. Petitnet is using it, the podcasters know it. People have tried their yarns. I prefer Rauma's yarns over Sana's yarn just because they are more, they feel more wholesome. That's, that's the only way I can describe it. They, um, Rauma and Hillesborg are the Norwegian yarns that uses the most locally sourced yarns and they produce a lot of the yarns here in Norway. Sanesgarn uses, I think there was an article, about 5% of their yarns are from Norway and everything else is imported, but they produce them in Norway. Uh, Sanesgarn's yarns are very smooth and soft, whilst Rauma and Hillsborg are probably more on the rustic end, but that is where my heart lies. I love the woolly wool feel. And usually, um, or lately, Sanesgarn has been coming out with great patterns, very modern looking, appealing to a lot of people. Uh, but I was at the yarn, my local yarn store and um, Rauma had this one and I hadn't really heard anything about it. I hadn't seen it anywhere. It was new to me. This is the Rauma Garn 425. And usually what they will do is they have a pamphlet with a lot of patterns that all uses the same yarn base. Now this yarn base was also new to me, but I have heard great things about it since. It's the Fivel base. This is how it looks. Fivel. Now I have not knit with this before. I have knit with their... Um, Vams, which is a very thick woolly yarn, which is very airy and perfect for felting with. So a lot of the slippers that I have made in previous episodes, if you're a returning follower, I have made with Vams. And this yarn looks and feels like Vams, but it's thinner. This one is 100 meters to 50 grams. While Vams is, is it 70, 60? Anyways, this is thinner than Vams, uh, but it is a very soft and airy yarn, loosely spun, at least it looks loosely spun to me. And this is produced in Norway at the, the Rauma, fil, fl, Rauma mill in Rumstadl. I think that's where it is. I've been to their mill once and I want to go back so badly, so badly. Uh, me and Matthias are talking about going on like a, a couple's trip before the baby comes. And um, I suggested going in that direction so I could stop by the mill. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah, Fivel is 100% Norwegian wool and it's spun at the factory in the Rumstalen. It's a two thread uh, carded yarn. So, oh, that means it's wor it's worsted spun, not woolen spun, I think. It's um, airy and gives very light pieces of garment and very soft and it's really good for felting. So I will have to make sure I don't felt this. I wash all my wools in the machine, but I will like triple check that I do stick to the 30 degrees and the wool soap to not felt this. The pattern that I am making 
is oversized though, so a little bit of felting is not going to ruin the garment. <laughs> but I fell in love with this magazine, not because of the sweater that I am making, but because of a different sweater. Actually, two, three different patterns. <laughs> so one of them, I, I, they styled the garments really weirdly, not a fan, but if you can see what I'm wearing, <laughs> You can see that I probably enjoy this kind of garment. So this is a cabled, all over cabled sweater. I imagine it's going to be so light and soft in this fivel, fivel yarn. It's called the Magne Flötegenser in Fivel. And Magne is a male name in Norway. I thought that looked really pretty. And another one, this is the one that I really wanted, <laughs> is this one. This is Annie's Raglan Gensa in Fivel. It just looks so cozy. And I thought that the split, like the very long split on the side, would be perfect for my growing belly. But it's also going to be really good afterwards for, for breastfeeding, throwing over dresses, throwing over jeans, tights, whatever. It's... It looks very comfortable, but they did not have enough yarn to make most of the garments in this book. Because this is a very thick yarn, that means there is less meterage to the ball. There's only 100 meters. And a lot of these patterns being oversized, adult-sized garments required for my size, so if I would say a medium, large or medium, depending on what kind of body I'm making it for, um, would require at least 14 balls of yarn. Now this is very affordable yarn. It's around four US dollars a ball, I think, four or five, depending on the conversion rate. Uh, but I would need 14. And they only had uh, 10 of each color in the store because they had probably gotten like a, a bag of 10 balls for each color because it's very new and they didn't have more. So I could not make anything that required more than 10 balls of yarn. Uh, there's another pattern in here, this cardigan. I thought it looked really pretty. It would be really great in this kind of yarn. Uh, but I don't know the way they styled it. I thought it looked a little bit awkward So I'm gonna wait and see if other people make this and see how it looks on them Because I don't know the way they styled it here. I Don't know But there was one pattern in the book that uses 10 balls of this and then there's some color work. So it needs three balls of a different color and that is the Fiara Genser. And uh, this is a very like oversized raglan, big color work going on. I think it's looking really pretty, but it doesn't have the big, the big splits on the side. And I haven't quite decided if I'm going to modify that. I probably will just do the color work and then split the hem and knit until I run out of yarn. And if I run out, then I can buy a ball of this online and it's not gonna be a big deal if it's not the same lot, dye lot, because it's for the ribbing and I'm not picky with my knitting. I have already modified the pattern. It's a raglan that is knit top down and I wasn't a big fan of the neck. So I am doing this neck instead, a turtleneck, folded turtleneck. The, these are both knit top down. Um, the only difference is like four stitches and then this is twice the length of this. So I cast on for, for the neckline of the Annie and I have knit the recommended length plus maybe two centimeters because I really like that whole 
tall, chunky turtleneck vibe. And when I see in the pattern photos, it tends to, to stretch out a little bit on the bottom of the neck because of how, how it's designed. So that loses a little bit of length because of that. So I figured by adding just one or two centimeters, I'll still have that tall neck feeling. And I have not washed it yet, but it's already next to skin soft. When you touch it, it's it's a, like a dry woolly wool, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't have long guard, stiff guard hairs, so it's not, it's not sensitive to me. And my neck is usually my sensitive area. So I think it's going to be really good. Now, I did not go for the colors that is in the pattern. The colors in the pattern is a darker, darker gray um, and a lighter. It's looking more taupey in the photos, but when I was in the store and looked at the, the dye lots, this is not representative of the color. So if you are looking into getting this and you can get your hands on Fivel online, um, this color that's in this photo is more gray than taupe. In real life it looks more taupey brown here but it's not in real life so instead I got I need to look at my cheat sheet for the second color <laughs> for the main color I am using the color 200 and for my contrast I'm using 404 which is this color which is a color that I have knit uh, the slippers in in Vums. So I think they have the same colors in the different bases. And I'm pretty sure I have a very similar color to both of these in my Rauma Final. So they have a lot of colors. Be Rauma has beautiful colored colors, especially beautiful heather colors. So I'm always gravitating towards them. So these are my colors for this pattern and honestly i think it's going to be a great color combination for this uh usually don't have a problem with colors bleeding so we'll see but it's looking really nice i'm really happy with my color choices and i think that they're gonna be a great combination and they also have this version of the sweater in the pattern book not quite my vibe but i think with the more autumnal combination it's going to look really nice so i know i was you know gonna be making cardigans for myself because that is what I need but my heart just really wanted a color work cozy sweater and if I split the hem it's more functional and it's oversized I'm making the medium which still gives me at least 16 centimeters of positive ease for a while so and with the split hem it's going to give even more so I think I think it's good um if not, I'll have it later. These yarns really stand the test of time. I have had zero issues with anything that I've made in Finul from them. I have my kuftas, like the all-over colorwork cardigans. They look good as new and I wear them a lot. So uh, I, I'm going to make this and have it for years to come. And I'm ready to start the body. I used three and a half millimeters for the neckline that I did a gauge swatch for this. I have it somewhere here. Yeah, I did a gauge swatch and I got gauge with four and a half millimeter needles. And then, you know, the ribbing is one needle size down. And what I do with my swatches is that I do pearl bumps to tell me how many uh, millimeter needles I use. So I have four bumps here 
space and then one bump, so that's 4.5 in my head. It gets more tricky if you have like 0 0.25, 0 0.75, but then usually I will do like a yarn over and a bump or something like that to help me think. So yes, very happy with this, really enjoying knitting with this yarn and excited to see how the colors play together. But yeah, there's plenty more patterns in here that I do want to make at some point. They also have some slipovers um, in the back, you usually have an overview of all the patterns. This one looks a lot like the Amy slipover from Sun is Garden, that it has, you know, it's a slipover with ties at the sides. I prefer the Amy slipover with the turtleneck, so I'll be staying loyal to that one. Um, but yeah, so many pretty, pretty everyday designs that I could see myself having in my wardrobe. So the pamphlet is 425 and it's from this year, 2023. Happy with it. Good, good addition. In the past, I usually haven't knit a lot of patterns from pamphlets, but I did knit a lot from from the Sun is Gone ones. And these, this is giving me the same vibes, that there's many patterns in there that I appeal to. And I think that's something that makes me knit more from it when it's not just one pattern. Yes. So what's the next whip? I am working on my um, little square blanket. I have not done the borders and attached the ones that I showed last time. I'm just <laughs> making new ones still. But, 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 in my gigantic basket, I have a project that is a little bit like scary to take out because I'm knitting with unspun yarn, and unspun yarn is more fragile. So I'm making the Miles shirt jacket by Ozetta, and last time I showed you I had done the pockets, which are basically the swatches for this jacket. And uh, I was going through it last time, so you can go back and see my gauges ever so slightly off so I'm doing some modifications when it comes to the length because mine for, for like 10 rows mine is a lot longer than in the pattern and also my body is more than 20 centimeters longer than the model in the photo and I want a big long cardigan so to adjust for that I'm going to be making this longer. I have finished the top portion of the cardigan so the front and back is done and it is joined in the round and I'm currently just knitting back and forth in stockinette knitting one way purling the other way um, quite a mindless knit it's not very portable so it's something that I do knit on um, on the couch and it is going quite fast but as you have seen in this episode, I've been knitting on other smaller things as well, more portable things and more addicting <laughs> things. But this is something that I really want to have for myself. This is something I see myself needing in my wardrobe. Big, warm, soft cardigan with pockets. Um, probably, you know, the pockets are not going to hold very heavy things because it is such a soft fabric. Fabric but it's going to help me those moments where I just need my hands free and I can put whatever I have in my hands in the pockets and we're good. So working away on this, it's a little bit hard <laughs> to see how it's going to look. So I'll insert a photo and the yarn that I'm using is Unspun from Hillesvog, which is comes in plates of about 200 grams and they are double stranded and I've just caked them up into little balls that I keep in this little thing so they don't run all over the place and I'm holding it with one strand of silk mohair to just add 
both strengths to these during the knitting process but also to help the garment to keep its shape afterwards make it more sturdy because the silk is quite a strong fiber the unspun does not really rip once you've knitted up but it is very soft and the silk mohair will just help it make it a little bit stronger it's not very visible at all that there is any silk mohair in it because it's so thin compared to the two airy strands of the unspun but it's just adding a little bit of properties that i want in a cardigan so we'll see how far i get i only had i think five balls of this and i have two more left once i finish this I have quite a bit left to go on the body lengthwise and there's also going to be two sleeves and there's going to be ribbing so we'll see we'll see i can get more online if i need to this silk mohair is the tin silk mohair from sun is Garn, and i know that they still carry it so it shouldn't be too big of a problem really to get more Um, I'm just checking to see that I haven't forgot anything major. No. Just a basket of mess left. Information about the yarn that I used for that. The uh, unspun from Hillsvog is their light gray, if you can say. They don't... The ones that they carry, they have four unspun plates that they carry. And they are not dyed. Um... This would be the light gray. They have one that looks like a yellow white, and then it's this one. And then you have a darker gray and then a charcoal gray. And uh, the silk mohair, tin silk mohair from Sun is Garn, is the color 1022. I am making the large size in this jacket, and I'm using needle size 5 and 6 millimeter needles. And my gauge is around 14 to 15 stitches. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Yes, I think, checking my notes, I, I have talked about all the things that I've been making or working on since last time. I did also make some swatches that I haven't showed you. This was a swatch for the color work and my gauge was off so i also looked at my color work cardigans that i made because i wasn't going to swatch in color work um and the color work cardigans was also knit on three millimeter needles so a lot thinner and i kind of found a middle ground between those two and i hit gauge so but i'm keeping the gauge swatch for future references if i want to make something on or and 3.5 millimeter needles in the future. I have this yarn that I showed last time, I think it was last episode, that I got in Turkey and I just love this color and I want it to be a cable cardigan with pockets that doesn't slip off the shoulders. That's what I want. And there's so many beautiful suggestions and patterns out there. I just I haven't been able to decide on what would be the perfect one, but I have swatched. Um, I have swatched with three different needles, so usually I'll cast on in one, knit like the bumps to say which which needle it is, and then after a while I'll do, on the purl side, I'll just knit a row, which creates a garter row, and then I'll change sizes, do the same thing again, knit a row, change sizes, and do a third one. So I have a gauge swatch with three different needle sizes here. So I can look at this if I find a pattern and see what gauge they recommended stocking at and see if any of these needle sizes would be good to go. So it's been wet blocked and it's dried. And what I have blocked, let's see. I also started with a small needle and as I changed to larger needles. I did like two stitches decreased and two stitches decreased just so the swatch wouldn't go 
like this. <laughs> and I have swatched with 4.5, 5, and 5.5 millimeter needles with this yarn. And I think it's going to be a good yarn for a cardigan. It's, it has like a little bit of strength. It's not as stiff as this. This, in my personal opinion, would be great. But I think this one is great as well. I think the cables are going to look quite defined. Um, and I think it's going to hold the testament through time. That it's not going to be um, too floppy. I think it's a good fit. But So just need to find what I want to make with it. I also had this beautiful yarn that I got in Turkey, which is a mix of baby alpaca and merino. And I made a swatch for that one as well. Used two different needle sizes. So I have four millimeters and 3.5, I think. Yeah, 3.5 millimeters and four millimeters. Is what I used for this watch and uh, it's so soft I think it would make a great sweater I would like it to be a cable sweater but it is a lot thinner than this it's also a lot more drapey so I don't know if it's a good fit for a cable sweater maybe more of a textured sweater would be good and a lot of designers are coming out with more textured sweater patterns this season uh, i have seen so i'll have a little think about it i have swatched with two different needle sizes which i think both of them would work really well for this yarn so just need to to look into it and i also have i have four five i have five skeins of this yarn and this yarn is 320 meters 200 grams so i think it should be enough for a sweater so that swatch is ready waiting for the pattern inspiration to pop and then i also swatched these two together to make a little swatch and for this one, I only used one needle size. I used 3.5 millimeters. And I think it's a good fit for the yarn. I could also go down a needle size, but I don't think I would want to go up more because then it would be too drapey. Now this is a silk merino blend and it's super wash. I think I got it in Turkey thinking it would make a great Great yarn for the baby. I just love the colorway and I don't know. I thought it was really cute. And I thought I only had one skein, but turns out last time I was in Turkey, I fell in love with the colorway as well. And I have some more of it. So I do think I have enough to hold a double and make a dress, like a Christmas dress for a one or two year old. So that is something that I'm playing with. I now have the gauge and I know I could go down a needle size and make it even tighter of a gauge. Um, so I really like this colorway. I don't think I'll make something for myself just because I prefer the non superwash, but it would make a great gift knit or I can make something like a dress for for my girl so we'll see we'll see but i think the colorway it looks really nice knit up as well and the swatch is ready again just need to decide on what to make oh yes i think i think that was all that I have for today. Um, yes, I hopefully it's not going to be that long until I get to record again. I hope that I'll have more knitting time. The, the feeling of fall is really here and I just 
I'm really enjoying the coziness of it, even if the weather is not ideal. Um, going forward, somebody commented asking if I could make like a separate uh, channel or podcast for children's knits and not have it in here, but no. I, this podcast is a space for me to share my joy of making and what I'm knitting on and what's making me happy and all the crafty things and it's you know it's it's not my job um this is my hobby so I'm gonna do what feels natural for me and of course if if I have a very like child knit heavy episodes I'll probably try to section it that I first talk about adult knits and then section into now I'm gonna talk about child knits but like today, when I only have one item for a child, and it's technically also a swatch for an adult, I'm just going to do what feels natural. I don't have the time in my life to to run two YouTube channels or have like two episodes that need editing and uploading, because it does take quite a lot of time. But I love doing it. So I'm going to continue sharing my joy of making, and I do hope that... You enjoy this content and follow along on the journey and you know even though I'm knitting more for the child because I didn't I wasn't pregnant before now I am I'm still gonna be knitting a lot of things for myself because it is what brings me the most joy and also I'll try to whip out some gifts as well because Christmas is around the corner and it's not like I have to knit anything for anyone but I do have yarn in my stash so it's an economical way of gift gifting people things that have a meaning um, when the budget is a little bit tight. So I will make or I will try to make knitted gifts for those deserving of knitting gifts and um, figure out what to do with the rest. So that is how my fall is looking. I am knitting whatever makes me happy and... I hope that you do the same um, because knitting is just and crafting in general is just so much more fun when it's making you happy and enjoying the process of it. So cheers to that and I will see you soon I hope. Um, until then um, stay safe, stay warm make all the beautiful things, and um, I will talk to you soon. Bye!